Every year around this time, my interest in wrestling tends to gravitate to its lowest point. You've got the NFL season is well underway. The baseball season has just concluded. Go Cubs, go! You've got basketball season is kicking off. You've got college football in the swing of things. So many different things going on. Uh, usually in October, November is when I get into kind of my wrestling recession in terms of having the least amount of interest, least amount of care, least amount of fucks given. Now, typically what starts to happen is as I get to Thanksgiving time, my interest starts to peak a little bit more. It starts to increase and I start to go back up the mountain, if you will. And that's the way it's been for years. Now, I don't know if it's going to do it as much this year because I really just don't have much interest in general in it right now. But it typically is what happens. And a large reason for that is because of Survivor Series. Now, WrestleMania is WrestleMania. And WrestleMania is the granddaddy of them all when it comes to professional wrestling, especially when it comes to the WWE. It is their Super Bowl. It is the gold standard show. It is the biggest event of the year. Now, you have other big pay-per-views like the Royal Rumble and SummerSlam. But for me, as much as I enjoy the Royal Rumble match concept, going way, way back in the day, you know, Survivor Series was the second of the big four pay-per-views that was created. It was created before the Royal Rumble was in 1988. It was created before SummerSlam was in 1988. And it's ironic, too, isn't it, that Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, and SummerSlam, all three of those events were really created in part as showcases off of the back of the story between Hogan and Andre that started on the road to WrestleMania three in 1987. You know, that's how far back we go with this stuff. But I used to really love Survivor Series and what it represented. Because being an old fan... I've always been a fan of tag team wrestling, so you would get all these big, huge tag matches. Not only that, you would get a chance to see this person fight this person, and you would normally never see that. You could potentially see a face have to fight a face, a heel have to fight a heel, similar to the Royal Rumble. And I always thought that was great. What I also loved about Survivor Series 2 was its positioning and where it was around Thanksgiving to where... It was a place that you could potentially launch off. Just in one match, you could potentially launch off four or five different stories that could all be built all the way through to WrestleMania. You know, in Survivor Series over the years, you've had some big moments and you've had some big things happen. Undertaker's debut in 1990. Ironically enough, The Rock's debut in 1996. I think about The Rock two years later, Survivor Series 98. Turning heel in aligning with Vince McMahon and winning the title, joining the corporation 99, Austin getting plowed over by the vehicle, 2000, him dumping Triple H in the freaking car at the end of the night. You know, I think about we skipped 2001 and all that disastrousness, but 2002 is still one of my favorite WWF pay-per-views of all time. Survivor Series 2002, along with like SummerSlam 2002 and WrestleMania 3 and SummerSlam 92, and there are others too. But I think back on what Survivor Series used to be. It was a chance to take a break from the world title picture. It was a chance to see what would happen if these guys faced off with these guys. You used to get all types of crazy fucking promos. Like you can go back and you see there's fucking Hulk Hogan and Jake the Snake Roberts and the Ultimate Warrior. And they're all trying to get their camera time. And they're all trying to steal the spotlight. It used to be all types of crazy shit going on in the build-up to Survivor Series and the Survivor Series matches themselves. I love Survivor Series, and over the years it's really broken my heart to see where the WWE has really diminished it to the point a few years ago where there was some talk about them getting rid of the Survivor Series concept. And lo and behold, I'm glad ultimately that cooler heads have prevailed and they ultimately have not, um, because that would have just broken my heart. As an old fan of the WWE, it would have broken my heart to see Survivor Series go away. But it's still here, you know, you think about a couple years ago, that's where Sting finally made his first appearance in WWE, and what a moment it was. And it really started to set the table as you were heading forward towards WrestleMania. And I look at what we're about to get here with uh, Survivor Series 2016, and on the surface, a lot of the people on this card I could give a fuck less about. And a lot of the stories with the product right now, I could give a fuck less about. 
but I'm actually really looking forward to Survivor Series for a variety of reasons. Number one is, is that none of the world titles are going to be defended. You know, especially with the fact that they've gone to this expanded pay-per-view model where you literally could, in some cases, have two world titles defended in a month. Now we're getting to a big four pay-per-view, and neither one of the titles is going to be defended. And for this one night, for that one show, and what those two champions are doing in the form of Kevin Owens and AJ Styles, I'm fine with that. Go into Survivor Series with these two champions in this match, and you could split them off into doing something. You could do all types of different things. You don't always have to have the world championships defended at every single pay-per-view. In fact, I think that's in part what diminishes the special feeling of the, the world title is when the champion is on the show every week, and then they defend the belt at every single pay-per-view. I understand WWE wanting to use the prop because guys can't be stars on their own in WWE, uh, both for things that are of their making and of the WWE's making, so they've got to use that star-making prop, the belt, which isn't nearly the star-making prop it once was, but every once in a while it's okay to back off of it. So, you know, it's cool to me to see many of the big names in the company facing off in the five-on-five -five tag matches. You know, I think you've got a Raw versus SmackDown five-on-five, -five, and then with the, the big guys like the Styles and the Owens and the Roman Reigns and the Randy Orton's and so on and so forth. Then, if I'm not mistaken, there's a five-on-five a -five tag team match, Raw versus SmackDown, if I'm not mistaken. That's fucking fine with me. Then you got a women's one, too. Yeah, sure, you've got those throwaway moments. Like, you know, at least, if anything else, too, another thing I'm looking forward to is the company with the IC title match has given me a built-in shit break for Survivor Series. Because I don't have to watch that match, I don't want to watch that match, and I'm not going to watch that match, and neither should you. What a perfect way to program a natural intermission into the show. So if people have to peepees or defecates, they have the opportunity to do so. Because who the fuck wants to watch Sami Zayn versus the suspect sissy for the IC title? I know I most certainly do not, and I will not. So I'm appreciative to WWE for that. But you know, then you've also got the aspect of Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. And there's a part of me that's really curious to see how they book this match, what the finish is going to be, how the finish gets over or doesn't get over, how this match gets over or ultimately doesn't get over. Uh, is this going to be a train wreck, WrestleMania 20 style? Or can these two guys kind of bumblefuck their way to a decent match that tells a somewhat interesting, thought-provoking, provocative story? You know, what are they going to do with that match? I'm looking forward to that match. Now, I said before, I don't want to see it. And in some ways, I really don't. But there's that part of me that wonders, is this going to be a complete train wreck? Or are they going to use this well as a way to launch into something big for one or both of these guys come WrestleMania? So I'm at least curious about it. But it's good to me to see that the WWE is creating an environment where they're trying to, like they did with SummerSlam, try to make it feel like the WrestleMania of the summer. Now they're throwing a little bit more at Survivor Series, really trying to make it feel like a big four pay-per-view, the way it should be, the way it's supposed to be. You've got all these different things that could come into play at this show. Is Undertaker going to show up? Is Triple H going to show up and fuck over Seth Rollins? You know, is somebody going to make a surprise appearance, a spectacular debut? There's all these different things that could potentially happen. And in a period of time right now, well, I really need something to jumpstart my interest in professional wrestling and specifically the WWE. I look forward to Survivor Series being an opportunity to potentially do that for me. It probably won't, but let me live the dream at least for a little while longer. Okay, let me live the dream, damn it!